This is the Bringing Business to Retail podcast. And if you are suffering from about page shame on your website, you're going to love today's episode with J. Crisp Crow. Welcome to the Bringing Business to Retail podcast on selenanight.com. Stay ahead of the competition by opening your doors to business experts so you can learn, grow, and be inspired. Passionate about bringing business strategies to independent retailers, please welcome your host, Selena Knight. Hey there, and welcome to today's episode of the Bringing Business to Retail podcast. I'm your host, Selena Knight, and if this is your first time listening, thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with me to learn all about how you can improve that page on your website that is probably the hardest to write, the about page. Now, before we jump in, I just wanted to read a quick review that I saw on iTunes. And I do apologize if I've read this one out before. I don't actually keep track of the ones I read and the ones I don't. I do love to begin with that the person has called themselves the retail therapist, which is I think is absolutely fantastic. So if I have read this one out, sorry, but I wanted to read it out because it truly conveys how a podcast can help with the most random things in the world. So five stars from the retail therapist. I have this on repeat. I have been listening to the Photography That Sells podcast with Lauren on my last two runs. And OMG, it is amazing with five exclamation marks. I need to listen again with pen and paper to write everything down. But only last week, I was feeling so super frustrated with all of my photos and not knowing where to start on trying to convey my brand in a way my target audience would respond to. So many tips to help me get started. Thank you. Well, thank you, Retail Therapist. But what I love is actually that podcast, and I'll link to it in the show notes, that podcast with Lauren about how to take better photos, which it seems so counterintuitive, doesn't it? That a podcast about taking photos, like, I don't know, it feels like to learn how to take photos better, it would have to be a video or you'd have to at least see some pictures. But that podcast with Lauren is one of our most downloaded episodes. So if you are having trouble with photos and how to convey your brand through those photos, just like the retail therapist did, head over. I'll pop a link in the show notes and listen to that episode with Lauren Kahn. So as I sit here recording this, it is a terribly smoky day here in Sydney. I mean, terribly smoky, like the air quality is way past poor. Normally when I look out my window and if my microphone's gone a bit funny, it's because I've just turned to look out the window. I can see trees and off in the distance, I can see the city and buildings. We can actually see the fireworks from where we are and we're quite away from the city. Um, I can see all of these things, but today I can not even see next door. That's how bad the smoke is because of the bushfires all around Sydney and well, all around Australia really. But, and we're quite lucky because even though we live in quite a bushy suburb, we, and we border the national park, our house is not quite there. So we're not classified as being bushfire prone, but we did have high catastrophic fire danger here in Sydney the last couple of days and again today, which for me, because I have asthma, has meant do not go outside at all. So I have been stuck behind my desk. In fact, I think I even mentioned this on the podcast a couple of weeks ago. My desk was a mess and I blamed it on the fact that we were doing all these renovations. But now the renovations inside have pretty much finished. So I have no excuse to have a messy desk. So I did spend about two hours the other day tidying up my office and my desk. I actually have two desks side by side in case one of my team come and work with me. And I'm looking over at it and already the stuff is starting to creep back on there again. And it's just random things. I can see a ball of twine. I can see my asthma puffer, a pair of scissors, a book a reused bull shopping bag. It's just random stuff that gets dumped there. And what I have noticed as a reformed hoarder, and I do say reformed, I can't stand stuff being anywhere. (laughs) Like I just, I just need clean lines and surfaces to make my brain work these days. Once upon a time, I used to love organized clutter, but these days I just love clean and minimal and simple and white or wood so that my brain doesn't have to think too hard. 
am I the only person like that? Is it, a, is it getting older that does this to you? Or is it just the fact that sometimes you have so much going on in your life that you just need empty space? So I am devoted to keeping my desk reasonably clean. And even though I'm working and I have been working on a masterclass for the last four days, absolutely solid. I'm trying a bit of deep work from, if you follow me on Facebook, I was telling you about this book that I'm reading called Deep Work by Cal Newport. And I think it's a little bit hard for me to get into the deep work at the moment because there are still so many things going on. But I really did find that the more I just allocated the time to finishing the task, the more I got done. And so writing a masterclass generally takes about two weeks. It's, it's not an easy process. First of all, you have to outline it and then you have to write it. Then you have to go and do the research and put the stats in. And then you have to go and create all the slides and then you have to record it and then you have to edit it. And I haven't quite handed over the writing of the slides or the editing to anybody yet. Not because I don't want to, but because I still quite often do this stuff on the fly. It's kind of like the podcast. I don't script the podcast most of the time. Um, I might have some notes about what I want to talk about, but I don't script my intros. I don't script my guest interviews. So it's really hard for me to hand a project like that over when I don't quite know what I'm doing. And that's not the best place to be. I understand that. But at this point, I haven't worked out how to do it a different way that works for me and my creativity. So the last four days, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that by the end of the week, I will have this masterclass done. I've literally got both fingers crossed on both hands here because my team are waiting for it. And I've had to stop what I'm doing to record this intro for this week's podcast. But as soon as I finish, I am jumping back in and I am so close to having the slides finished. And then I have to jump in and record it. But of course, today is garbage day. (laughs) And that means that there are three garbage pickups. We have the garbage, we have the recycling, and it's also green waste day. So I know that the minute I'm going to start recording, in fact, I've already had to press pause on this intro recording because the garbage truck came around. So I'm trying to get this masterclass finished, get it recorded so that I can get it edited, so I can get it up for you guys to see. I'm not even going to tell you what it's about. It's it's five big, big, juicy. No, 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 don't, don't. I, I'm terrible with secrets. Do not tell me your secrets, okay? <laughs> so today's episode is about how to craft the perfect about page. This is something that I have struggled with, and I only just recorded this episode. So if you are listening to it when it goes live, don't go and check out my about page because I haven't taken Jay's tips on board yet. Okay. I'll let you know when I do, and I'll do a before and after I'll come back and update the episode with a before and an after, but I just recorded this last week and I wanted to get it out to you because we are about to head into the busiest season of the year for most of you and a perfect about page or not even perfect, a better than what you've got now about page is going to help you sell more product. I know, I know that that sounds so strange, but Jay is going to tell you why it's going to help you sell more product. And she is going to give you so many juicy tips. This is one that you guys are going to put on repeat. And if you are looking to do more than just fix your about page, if you're looking to grow your business, but you're not quite sure what it is you should be focusing on. And so you procrastinate and you go over your about page 472 times. Stop. I want you to go to selenanight.com forward slash quiz. And I want you to do my from super to superstar quiz where it's super fun and it will only take you like two minutes. Put the kettle on and by the time the kettle boils, you will have taken this quiz unless you get stuck on the cheese question. Yes, there is a cheese question. But anyway, super fun. There's like 11 questions and it will help you work out which area of your business that you need to focus on in order to grow. I'm even going to give you a free blueprint that shows you how to do that. So head over to selenanight.com forward slash quiz, totally free, couple of minutes, and you will be able to go into this holiday rush knowing which part of your business you need to focus on in order to get ready and grow for the new year. Okay, take it away, Jay. 
Hey there, and welcome to today's episode of the Bringing Business to Retail podcast. If you get stuck with words, I'm talking about writing words. You think that as someone who speaks a lot, I would write really, really good words. My kind of forte is I'm really good at things like Facebook ad copy. So what I really struggle with, and I'm sure that you do too, is writing about yourself. How do you write about yourself and your business without feeling like a complete douchebag, right? Am I the only person who feels like this? You feel like I, nobody wants to hear about this stuff. So I got a bit of an expert in today to talk to you. And I have to say, Jay, you have the hardest name to say. <laughs> really? You think? Oh, it's three it, syllables. <laughs> it is, but they are, if you say it fast, mm -hmm. right, Jay Crisp Crow, Jay Crisp <laughs> We've got Jay Crisp Crow, I have to say it really, really slowly, mm -hmm. on to talk all about how you can filter out that, that head that head space where you're like, what do I write about? And craft the perfect about page for your business. So welcome to the show, Jay Crisp Crow. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I, I love this topic. You know, as you know, when you said, do you want to talk about about page? I was like, yes. Yeah. Um, and all the things that you just said about feeling like, you know, a com you know, a complete wally when you write for yourself, that is completely normal. I think only narcissists feel comfortable about writing about themselves endlessly. And the about page is so important that you put all this extra pressure on yourself to you know, get it right. Um, and you can just get in your own way. So, but I'm happy to talk about getting out of your own way today. I would definitely like, like to hear favorite. about that because I yeah. reckon I've rewritten my about page about 452 times. Oh, yeah. And every time I look at it, I just cringe. So I am perfectly, and the classic thing is I actually have a copywriter on staff, yeah. but we haven't worked on the about page. So okay. the, it's, it's like the mechanic with the car, right? Yeah. Yeah. Always the so, way. So that, that's a really good point that you've brought up because I, in one of the, one of the freebie, one of the first freebies that I ever wrote was a, a bit of a guide to write your own about page. And it started because I logged into the back of my WordPress website and saw 174 revisions. And I was like, this is crackers. <laughs> like I, this, somebody needs, why is this take, you know, I can do two drafts for a client and I'm like, boom, that's it. You're going to love this. And they do. And so I thought, you know, this is, I can't do 175th version so I sent it to one of my copywriter friends she literally changed two things sent it back and I was like that's it that's my about page and then I realized that it's it's like some of the other more emotionally um tough things to do in your life sometimes you just shouldn't do it by yourself you you know sometimes you need um you know either either a guiding hand or a yeah, friendly face for, to flash it out and for them to go, no, that's not weird. Um, wine? Are we allowed to have wine? Uh, look, if it floats your boat. <laughs> there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with going hog wild with a little bit of, oh, this sounds great. Let's see how that flies. Because the other thing is, is that good copy is not all about creative, the creative writing, right? So, mm -hmm. like, good copy is about the creative writing mush together with assembling the words in a certain way that makes people want to do something because you can write great copy and it be in a word doc and all be in 12 font and no one's going to read that um in fact the copywriter that i sent my after the 174th revision to um, i met at pro blogger and we roomed together and she was reading my stuff and she just said to me jay no one wants to read your wall of words and i was like oh, oh gutted. totally true it's absolutely true. So let's ask, let's address the elephant in the room. Do we really need an about page? Like do oh. people even care? So I think the way that we buy has changed as far as what we as conscious savvy consumers want to do is feel really good about an investment and we know that the psychology of buyers is that they, if it's a big emotional investment or a big financial investment, um, we make an emotional buying decision. And then we like wake up our logical brain and say, hey, hey, I need some help justifying this to myself now. You know, get up and tell me that this was a good idea. So when we're making emotional decisions, the easiest way to help a human make an emotional decision is to give them a human voice to connect to, which means that it doesn't matter if you're like a solo operator service provider or a massive, great, big uh, retail corporation. If you have a brand voice that sounds human, 
that people can connect to, you've taken down a whole lot of barriers for them to make a buying decision. They're like, oh yeah, I like the sound of that. And it, like sometimes you can't guess what's that, what that's going to be. You can do all the market research in the world, but every buyer comes with all of this psychology that they've dragged through their childhood and depends on, you know, where they've grown up and what their parents were like and how they bought things and how they talked about money and all that stuff. So, um, so sometimes copy is also about testing and tweaking, like putting something out there and seeing what people respond to and go, that's it. But maybe yes, not that's 175 times. Yeah, not to start with. <laughs> like write it, put it out, see what people think. Don't write it and then rewrite it and rewrite it again and three months later not have published anything. That's, that's also a problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, so many times I, like, I don't know if it's because I'm a marketer or I just really care about who I give my money to, but I yeah. do read the about page and I have to say I get really turned off by you know, XYZ is a home and giftware shop in Sydney, yeah. Australia, specialising in all things gift and homewares. And we're passionate about gifting and homeware. Oh, no. Do you know what I no, mean? I, you, you clearly yeah. understand what I'm saying. <laughs> and I, if I find that, I tend to just go, oh, where else yeah. can I find this thing I'm looking for? Yeah, right. Yeah. So I'm assuming I'm not, I'm not the exception. A lot no. of people do visit the About page. Yeah, I think I think what people where we get about pages wrong is either one people treat it unlike any other page of their website. Where on every other page of their website they're like, oh, I have to write website copy, and oh, I have to write a sales page, and it has to be converting. And then they get to their about page, and they're like, oh, I have to write my backstory, and it and it sounds like a journal entry. That's one way we get it really wrong. We don't treat it like it's a right I'm putting you? My, guys you can i'm putting my <laughs> hand up uh, that that was about my first five right yeah days. no one wants to read your journal except your, you know your mum and your boyfriend in year 12 um but everyone else just wants the parts of your story that are relevant to how they're you're going to you're going to make them feel during the buying purchase right so i think what we do is that we don't consider the about page as a conversion tool and it's actually the biggest conversion tool that we have because if you think about the overall structure of our website, we have a homepage that says, welcome, you're in the right spot. You know, hopefully it's SEO'd up the wazoo so we get lots of traffic on there. And then we know that regardless what kind of business you have, people are really likely to click on the about page so that they can see what you stand for, what your ethics are, if they align with you, if they like the look of you. Um, and then from your about page, if you just dump like a journal entry of this is my life on there, it doesn't convert people to getting them to the next page. So you don't treat it like a bridge. And it's totally a bridge between welcome you're in the right spot to here's all my things that you can buy and you should definitely buy them. If you've got just a big fat gap, people are just falling off the edge um, and, and leaving. Or if you have an Instagram feed, because one of my pet peeves is Instagram feed at the bottom of your about page, because then we're all on Instagram and we've forgotten that we were even <laughs> we click looking away. at you. We're gone. We're never coming back. So I think the journal entry is a big deal. <clears throat> the other problem is that we get super corporate and we start talking about our business and our brand in the third person. And the one opportunity we have to create a really human voice to convert people into the persuasive tone that we need on all of the services and sales pages and all those kinds of product descriptions, we miss the we miss the boat. So we're asking our reader to take this huge step towards investing in us rather than the 40,000 other places they could get the thing that we're offering. Um, but we're taking a big step back and putting up a big barrier and talking like we're the queen to people. Um, and, I, you know, only the queen should be talking about herself in the third person. Okay, no so that is... That's like the perfect question for me to ask you, which yeah. is how do you work out what parts of your story or your business's story yeah. are actually important enough to stick on this page without it sounding like a journal entry? Yeah, right. Okay. So no good copy is written without an idea of who you're talking to and are at least at least one out of every five clients, even though these are people that have been in business for years and years and they've done heaps of great work on their marketing and their strategy, some, you know, at least every five client I say, who do you want to sell to? And they say, everyone. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I want to sell to everyone. Yeah. And so when we, when I think when, you know, people like you and me ask clients to, um, find a niche and specifically target our language to one sub 
set of people. We're not asking them to not work with or not sell to everyone else. We're just asking them, the, the, it's the concept of, say you start off with 100 clients and two of them you just wish that you could clone and the rest are great and you still want to work with them. But those two clients, you know, when you work, they pay you on time, they don't micromanage, they leave great reviews on your Google, they tell everybody about your product, um, you know, they're just in love with you and you just think, oh my gosh, why can't I have, you know, 70 of those? It's about speaking to that two people, that 2% until you can grow that base of um, the best clients. That doesn't mean you're not going to sell to the other, you know, 98 people. They're probably going to come along for the ride, you know, anyway. But it's about figuring out who those people are for you. And that changes all of the time, um, which for people like me who hate doing ideal client work, <laughs> every time I sit down with a branding specialist, they're like, tell me about your ideal client. I'm like, well, I've written some stuff. <laughs> Um, and so I know, like, I don't want to dig in. It seems like such hard work. Like, let, get me, let me get on with the writing bit. I don't want to do all this foundation, blah, blah, blah. But it is the most helpful thing for, for easily writing things that you know is going to make those people feel like you're exactly the right person. So, I just was thinking of an example then. So I can ride a bike, but I'm not interested in bikes. I have a yeah. friend that owns a mountain biking store. And then one of our team members, Fiona, who's our automations expert, is a champion cyclist. So when she's not working with us, she races as a cyclist. And I was just thinking, if she went to, let's just, you know, the website, because that's where you're going to buy something. She is go she's much more likely to be their ideal client. The only yeah, right. reason I, as a customer, am going to be on that site is because I'm buying a present for somebody. So <laughs> yeah. they don't need to talk to me. Yes. If they go and put some jargon in there that would relate to Fiona, then that's awesome yeah. because I go, oh, these people know what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's totally it. Those, those people, there's going to be people that just buy from you because of a whole range of things like they've been, you know, somebody's recommended you and they're like, oh, yeah, I trust your recommendation, boom, done. Yeah, but the well, people they've mentioned make, a product, like, you know, my husband does cycle as well and he might say, oh, I want these gloves yeah. from this place. Yeah, totally. Um, but for the people who are going to make like a big emotional investment in oh. your brand... Mm -hmm. um, that is part of speaking directly to them because they're going to come back again and again and again and they're going to be the people like your lady Fiona is going to say to you, oh, that thing that your husband wants, you can totally get it at this place. And so they're going to, you know, drag all their people that they refer to, you know, along along for the ride, along yeah. for the ride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pun fully intended. <laughs> <laughs> so, um so yeah, I don't like there's there's no harm in figuring out who it is that you're talking to and talking directly to them. So before you even start writing, really and and that's something you need to do every couple of months. Ugh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. But we, really, we we've done it twice this year. As yeah. we as we find more data out and we're quite lucky with the back end of our email funnel, we can see how long and in fact I have to admit, Fiona being the automations expert, every time we have a sale of a product. Yeah. She will actually, and sometimes, you know, it's many times a week, she'll actually go in and look through that customer's history to see how long they've how been long? with us. Yep. What, what do they, do they open newsletters? Do they look at the podcast? All yep. that kind of stuff. And then in her head, she's, we obviously have these discussions because she comes to our team meeting and says, hey, I checked out these people and this is what they say. But for her, building out the automations, it gives her that insight Oh, it actually takes, and we know it takes around about 12 to 18 months for someone mm -hmm. to do a big purchase with us, Yeah, but they'll do a $7 purchase up front. Yeah. So then we have to pull back and say, right, if this is what it looks like, we have to make the right offers at the right time. Mm -hmm. But that's exactly. customer journey. And we're yeah. talking about about pages. So we could get caught on that subject, but we're going to come back to <laughs> how do you work out which part of the stories are important and yeah. which, part, which part is you and which part is the business? Yeah, so one of the things you just mentioned is really important because, as we said, copy is not just about creative writing. It's also about, like, engineering the copy to sit on the page, um, whatever that page is, in a certain way to make people want to click something or make it easy for them to click. But the third thing that's bad is about testing and tweaking. And so emails are such an important part of figuring out what part of your backstory people want to know about because you have... People who are engaged in your email, um, they'll either respond to you and, oh, my goodness, isn't getting a reply from a, you know, a 
automated campaign, the most incredible thing ever. Yes. Um, or you'll get a better click through rate on certain parts that have certain parts of the story. So it's always about collect. It doesn't sound very romantic, does it? It's like dig around in your soul and bring out the best words. Yes, that's the first part of the process. But then figure out what people love and ask people. Mm. So many of my clients, so I'm like, have you, you know, have you asked those favorite two clients? you know, how they even found you, why they loved you. They're like, no, like there's gold in that. Like, why did you pick me? That's on my initial form. Like, why'd you pick me? So immediately I'm getting feedback about why they like me so that I can build that in, as you say, going forward to what do people need to know? Um, That's interesting because so many times you see on, and I have to say a decade ago, I was guilty of this and a little bit more wise now but we used to have as people went through checkout how did you hear about us yeah and that is a very very different question as to why did you buy from us yes how i heard about you was that's irrelevant the fact is what was it that made you decide that we were good enough for you to give up give your money to yeah, because people will, and then the, the, the pattern starts to come through. Like if everybody starts to say, um, you know, I love the ethics behind your brand, yes. then you know that part of the backstory has to be about why those particular ethics um, are important to you and why you decided to build a company based on these values and ethics because that's what people are buying, that emotional feeling of giving you money and getting something back. And sometimes it's not the thing that they get back that they're really buying. Um, and I use a, um, I lo- like I used to love going to the Oxfam shop and I talk about this with my product-based businesses all the time. Like I never went for a basket really. If I went no. for a present, I was like, yeah, I'm going to buy a basket because I love baskets. But I went to the Oxfam shop to buy a basket because I was buying that really good feeling that something that I bought gave back to someone I would never meet. And that was my biggest purchase, not the basket. Yes. We yeah. talk about this actually inside of Scale Store. We have a whole chapter, funnily enough, about this. And one of the examples that we use is, um, you know, when you, when you, I'm not even going to say buy, but when you end up with a bag from a brand you love, let's say Tiffany or mm-hmm. Kate Spade, or, and I'm talking like mm-hmm. a shopping bag, not a hand. Oh, yeah. So the bag that you this. take your stuff home in, <laughs> yeah. how often do you see people toting that bag around? Mm-hmm. They don't have the product in it anymore, yep. but they do it because they want the world to see yep. who they align with. Absolutely. And doesn't that make perfect sense? Because we're buying, we're emotional beings and that's what we're buying is that feeling and that I'm with them. Yeah, that's what alignment's all about. Band t-shirts. When you were younger, remember you had band (laughs) t-shirts. When you were younger. My husband still does that. (laughs) (laughs) But that's it, isn't it? Like we want people as, as, as consumers and as businesses, as consumers, we want to align our values, like you said, our values and our ethics, our beliefs, you know, whether it's that I still listen to this radio station or yeah. I listen to this radio station because I know that they're big on social enterprises or whatever yes. it looks like. You want, you want to kind of show the world that that's what you like and then the people who like that too will hang out with you. And yep. this is just one, like we're going very, very kind of off topic, <laughs> but it's not in the sense that when yeah. you harness that, like you said, if you can pull out why people buy from you, I think that's like ka-ching. That's, that's Absolutely. Like, if we tweeted, that would be a tweetable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible at that Twitter. I don't um, even know how to use Twitter. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. A marketing person who admits to that. That's excellent. But that's how you do it. Like you could write 24 pages of here's how I ended up starting this business. Um, if you can target out of that 24 pages three paragraphs that are really important to your people, that's what you put on there. Um, I also think there's a bit of room on about pages to write the stuff you mean. Like, okay, maybe you haven't tested every single um, phrase or brand promise or statement that you're going to put on there, but sometimes there are things that are really important to you that you need your customers to know and you need the world to know. And you know what? It's your business and sometimes it has to be fun. And I think like the about page is the spot to do that if you want to. Like sometimes just write what you want. (laughs) And And see how it goes. See how it goes. And if you feel good about it, no one ever mentions it, but it doesn't damage your brand, that's okay. 
I, I do love it when you do get, like you said, we have this email that goes out and it, the subject line is literally, I thought your name was Susan. And it goes on to tell the story <laughs> about how I got someone's name wrong. Anyway, we get so many people who write mm-hmm. back and go, hi, my name's Emma. Hi, my name's Jane. I thought this funny. I thought I was the only person who did that. And then I literally had one this morning and she had replied back. I'm totally going off topic. Uh, she had replied back and she'd replied with her husband's email address and it had his name. And I knew that that was not her thing, but I, it was actually a conversation between one of my team, but I, it was forwarded to me. And Elizabeth had written like, hi, husband's name and she wrote back and then answered the questions and then she wrote back and she goes oh actually that's my husband's name my name is this and and I saw Elizabeth wrote back I should have just stuck with Susan Susan (laughs) (laughs) I love it the reason I say that is simply because we have the same thing with the about page so I've had funny stories on there like anecdote stories and I will get people saying I read Mm -hmm. your about page and OMG, that happened to me. Yeah. So I, like you said, I think you can have a little bit of creative license, which brings me, I think, to my next question is for people who are listening are independent brands. Now, they could be just starting out or what I tend to find is people listening here probably up to about five or $10 million. Mm-hmm. So anything from starting out to five or $10 million turnover. And at that point, let's call it five million, it, even maybe a million, but you feel like you have to get a little bit more of, a bit, a bit more away from, I am, yeah. you know, struggling, starving artist business owner yeah. to actually we're a professional business and these <clears> are the services that we provide and these are kind of products that we survive, provide and we get our shipping out. How do you transition from, I want you to buy from me because I'm a single mum of six, my eyes twitching when I read that kind of stuff, um, to actually we're a professional company and yeah. we still have all the beliefs and it's all the same ethics but yeah. we'll get you, we'll give you free shipping and we'll get yourself yeah. out in 24 hours and we've got yeah. people on chat, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I think that's a really important word that you said in there. And this is, I come up with this against this all the time from bigger brands who are like, yeah, but we want to seem professional. Where on earth did we decide that professional meant not human? Oh, that's me. Just one second. <laughs> Just doing a dance, fixing my hair. All right. That was brilliant. At least it wasn't me. Uh, no, yes, that was me. <laughs> it's actually on silent, but that's the uh, alarm to pick my kids from school. Oh, uh, but she's been no, talking to No, no, no. She's oh. got homework club today, but we'll just have to edit that bit out because that's impressive. So, where in the world? Yes. Professional. Where, yes. Where in the world did we decide that? professional meant that we didn't have to be human anymore there's like this step up right where we feel like well the 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 business is leveled up so now we have to be straight and corporate and professional and professional means that we've we're going to strip all the humanity out of um you know everything that we write we're going to write in third person and we're going to say you know the so-and-so team and um and we're going to take away any kind of and it's not even fun and it's not even quirk it's about humanity and on your about page i mean you can have you can be a law firm and um or you can sell something that's you know some medical equipment that's really serious the fact is that whoever is reading your website to help make a decision either for themselves or their company to buy your thing they still are hardwired through human evolution to respond to storytelling and so even if you don't do anything but in your team bios have at the end of each bio well, we have a qualification in this and this and da, 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 and then on the weekend we breed beagles um it's just it's not even quirk it's not even funny it's about realizing and recognizing that that other person is a human too it's like seeing your teacher at the shops do you remember <laughs> when when you used to well, you know when you're in primary school and you see your teacher at the shops for the first time and you're like oh she yeah, exists outside of school yeah she's got to buy yeah, they're, pe- they're, they're people what is that about it's that kind of feeling like oh there's a human there um and i can pretty much get on board with everything that they've talked about about their brand um, and I think that it's per- it's perfectly normal to want to take your messaging to the next level, but your messaging at the next level um, does not mean having to strip away any kind of humanity out of it, in it you, you know, at all. Do you have any favourite, like, corp- well, it's corporate, in air quotes, corporate about pages? 
Oh, oh my gosh, you should see my swipe file. It's just ridiculous. It's enormous. Give us like a top three. Oh, oh, you should have, I should have prepped for this actually. Uh, yeah, we don't, we don't send the questions out. We like to catch them. <laughs> um, there is, oh, there's one really good one. Oh, if I can remember who it was. Oh, mum, 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 mum. There's a pen company. They've got light blue branding and they sell really expensive pens. Like, um, I might have to hook like you up for the later. show notes later. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they just, I love, I love their about page. And one of the reasons I love their about page is actually it breaks all the rules that I normally teach people. It, it talks about like we the team, which I, which I, you know, is fine. It's just another way to say I because they are a team. Um, what I really don't like is when there is one human behind the whole operation and they talk about we because they feel like it's going to be more professional and make them look bigger when yeah. actually there's a real movement, I think, for bespoke beautiful things where you know who's at the top of the food chain and you know who the buck stops here person is. But I that, think that's that all comes down to knowing your customer, right? I'm, yeah, right. I'm waving my pen at you. <laughs> I'm so adamant about this. I'm that's my true. Pen at you. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. But I, I love their, um, I love their website because the way that they talk about their brand is so loving. I'll have to hook you up. I can't remember who yeah, it is. We'll, we'll pop it in the show notes. I yeah. love brands like there's a, a brand and they do amazing video as well. It's called Nadam. It's like oh, nice. N A A D A M, and they are ethical cashmere manufacturers. It's it, the, they have this video, and I probably have talked about it before, but I will hook it up in the show notes. <laughs> Essentially, it's about these two guys who ended up in Nepal, uh, lost, ended up staying with these. Uh, goat alpaca herders what's cashmere goat goat goat, goat herders yep. and discovered that they were getting fleeced haha by <laughs> these middlemen and this is why the price of cashmere is so expensive because of the middlemen it's not actually the fabric like yeah right. so they went away had a bit of a talk you know had a bit of a discussion went back with a million dollars in us dollars in cash and started buying the cashmere direct from the herders so that they could support, you know, yeah. you know See, where the story is. Awesome going. story. Awesome, awesome story. story. And, and that's what we'll sell you. Yes. Yep. Brilliant. I don't even wear cashmere, but I still want one of their things. <laughs> you want and one of their things, yeah. Their cashmere jumpers are like 69 US dollars. It's ridiculously right. yeah, wow. good quality and cheap. Well, you know, inexpensive, great value. Cheap is probably yeah. not the right word. But I've so bought into the story. One, I talk about it all the time. Yeah. But two, I kind of want their thing just because of the cool story. Yeah, yeah, cool story. Look, I think um, one of the other one of the one of the ones I really like too, and it breaks a couple of my rules, is the um, Frank Body oh, um, yes. about page. And so you, that's a really good example, I think, of you don't know who the person is really. There's not a huge amount of who are on their about page about you know who started it and blah blah blah. But the brand voice is really human. Like they have like a collective brand voice that really comes across so that you are if you're their target market you're totally tickled by that and so it sounds like a human voice where really it's probably a, a collective and a collaborative of a whole lot of people who have come together to create this brand there are three brand i've seen them speak i think there's three of them well that's, that's pretty cool yeah yeah um okay so my next question for you is when it comes to things like your Facebook about section, mm -hmm. your Instagram 150 character bio versus <laughs> you can do that. on your about page. Yeah. Do you just kind of do a condensed version or how do you take, like say you finally think you mastered the about page, mm -hmm. how do you take that and then condense it down into 150 characters for Instagram and however many characters you get on Facebook? Yeah, um, I think each platform has a slightly different tone depending on what your brand or your business is because some people's websites need to be, I don't want to even use the word professional, but the tone needs to be um, different on your yes. website and, um, and then slightly different again on your email marketing. And then some, for some brands and businesses, Facebook and Instagram is like the fun cousin, right? That's like where you just engage with people and have good um, banter. So there is a difference in tone, I think, for some brands and businesses. I think what a lot of people don't do well, you know, it's a totally different thing writing your Instagram bio from your about page. So your Instagram bio is, um, needs to be like punchy and memorable, but I think it also what we could all do better is put a bit of promise into that, so a bit of brand promise. Yeah. So I would like to see 
less emojis <laughs> and more this is what you're going to feel like when you finished with me um, in those really short, sweet bits. And again, it's about, you know, changing it up and testing it and tweaking it and seeing what people respond to. Um, I hardly ever click on the about section of a Facebook page ever. I like if yeah. I want to, yeah, if I want to read their about, I'm going to their website. Yeah, I was I was asked this question, and when I saw it, I was like, "Have I ever clicked?" The only I think the only <laughs> thing I ever have is if there are two pages with the same name. Yeah, like, right. Okay, like one might be called you want to check it copy, out. and the other one yeah. might be called crisp copy. But yeah. one's you, and the URLs are different, but the actual title looks the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're like, "Am I in the right place?" Spot. spot. Yeah. Well, that's why my face is all over mine. <laughs> you're in the right spot it's the og it can, be, it can be a little bit different i think if you're a product based for sure or if you're a retailer and you always you yeah. kind of struggle with this kind of things yeah. um you said earlier that you you had like a freebie download to help do you still have that can yeah we, yeah can we can we get give people the url for that of course you can oh, of course you can Indian. i'll send yeah i'll send it to you, you i love uh, the show notes yeah, totally, totally. And it's it really is about like here's why it's important to have your face on your about page. But I do step you through like there's 10 steps. Um, it's I talk a lot about like do I talk in first person or third person? Do I have to have my face on there? Um, those kinds of things. So, yeah, you can absolutely, absolutely snaffle that. Thank you. Um, and and then, it's, then you've got someone to hold your hand just virtually while you write this about page. And step 10 really is like publish the thing and see what, flies because everything online is editable right it's would you would you go so far as mm -hmm. this is the marketer in me mm -hmm. like pulling that about page copy and then throwing it on social media and saying oh hey, yes yes yeah say no then no i'll totally i mean that's how you test things right i would go so far as to get on my business page and say what are three words that you would use to describe me and when you start hearing the same patterns of words back you're like that's what people associate with me and if that's wrong I need to overlay that with a new story I'm not doing a good enough job but if that's something that I can get on board with maybe that's part of my brand promise maybe that's part of my statement maybe that's what I should lead my about page with because oh my goodness if we could play a shots game where we went to pick randomly went to people's about pages and they start with the word about you know we would be need an ambulance in 20 minutes um it's amazing how many people get their website installed and then leave about about the team yeah I know that I clicked on the about page I know where I am like give me something make me a promise um, get me excited because you know we know that 80% of us don't read any further than the first line of any one given page of a website so it's got to be engaging so that you can drag people down and use that page to convert them to get them onto the next page so I'm just trying oh. to think if mine says that. I think it says <laughs> I think it says who is Sal, but I do okay. know it says something along the lines of before we get started, I just want to let you know I don't deal with ho hum or vanilla. Something oh, like I like that. that. <laughs> I like that. That's very Oh, I don't yeah, I can't do vanilla. Well, vanilla is the only the only place vanilla is good is in ice cream. <laughs> That's my opinion. Um, so um I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap you up because I think we could talk for ages, but You've given us so many great tips. What are maybe like the top three things mm -hmm. that if you, well, apart from don't leave about on your about page, if you could <laughs> smack people over the back of, head, back of the yeah. head and say, do this this afternoon. Yes. What would um, be? Stop introducing yourself as I'm a passionate whatever, whatever, whatever you are. Passionate is my pet peeve. If I could rid the marketing world of the word passionate, I think that's what I would use my superpower to do. Um, it's one of if that resonated with you. <laughs> uh, yeah, Authent authentic's another one. And it's not because the word doesn't mean something great, because it totally does. Of course, we're all passionate about our thing. But our readers have read the word passionate 862 times already today. When they read over it, they go, meh. And the last thing you want your potential clients or customers to be doing is going meh, meh. about your brand. So passionate's got to go. Like, I'm a passionate dog yeah. walker, knitter, marketing person, toothbrush seller. Yep. Gone. Find another word. So passionate is number one okay. and two and three. No. <laughs> um, the second thing that people forget to do is to put a call to action on their website page because they, as I said before, the other pages are all treated like converting copy yeah. and this one is the backstory. And so we get to the bottom of the about page and we know that readers 
you know, the minute they open up their laptops, um, become inherently lazy because that's how the internet's conditioned us to be. And so if we don't ask people to do something, they get to the end of our story and go, that's nice. Oh, I don't think I have one. What kind of, what kind of things would you have if, if well, I'm going to steal <laughs> this opportunity and say, not like me, but then I will say, if you are a product based business, would yep. it just be like shop now? It can be as simple as shop now. Um, what I suggest sometimes to people is to say, have just a really like a cute thing that says, I know we're not supposed to have favourites, but here's a, here's my favourite product with a oh, cute little, you know, the featured I product. Love that. Yeah. Because then you're like, oh, I want to see what her favourite is. Yeah. And then suddenly you're in the shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, I like that. that's, I'm 90% sure I don't have a call to action. On that, so, uh, that's. Uh... Get yeah. the copywriter to sort that one out. <laughs> yeah. And if you, I mean, having a call to action at the end is great, but also what if people get halfway through your brand story and go, yeah, I'm in the right spot. This is the person I want to work with. Like have something, have an option for them to get out sooner, I think as well. So even if it's just like some hyperlink text. Yeah. 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 Um, and I think the last thing is um, um, probably like you've got to have your photo. Um, and, oh, look, sometimes I love things that break the rules too. As I said before, some of my favourite about pages completely break all of my own rules. But I think a lot of the way that we used to do business is we used to sit down across from someone and have a face-to-face -face conversation and look in their eyes and all the stuff that they would say would make a dent, but the way that we could look into their soul would, ha would mean that we would make a decision based on we felt we could trust them or not. Yep. And so I think if you want a shortcut to get people to trust you, and this is this is a bit of a difficult thing for people right because they're like well what if they don't like the look of me and that's what we all start to go through in our heads um and the thing is is that people will make that judgment call regardless and that's not your job to change no no and the and the right people will the people that will absolutely love you will look you in the eye and think yeah i can i like i like the cut of her jib just by you know locking eyes with you and the closest we can get on an about page is a photo so have a team photo show us the dog that comes to the office um you know let us look in people's eyes so that we can make a decision based on whether we feel like we're going to gel with you or not yeah you feel like you're part of the club don't you when yeah. you see those inside we used to i mean back in the day i'm getting again off track back in the day we used to uh, in the newsletter we would have something like this is Jane's favorite product this week. Or yeah, nice. Em Emma said that we had to send you a newsletter about this. And it would yeah. say it, quite often, well, because I didn't write the newsletters back then either, but <laughs> the girl, the girls who were doing it would write about the product and they go, oh, we took our kids, I took my kids out this weekend yeah, nice. and I used this sunscreen and I really liked it because. Yeah. And you would see instant sales from that because of yeah. the social proof of real person who I can see yeah. and who writes me emails every couple of weeks because we would swap on Rota. Oh, yeah, I love the, well, the way that she writes those emails. Oh, I love those two pictures of her kids. They're so yeah. cute. And so all, like you said, right back at the beginning, we've come full circle, is it's that unconscious connection that we're making mm -hmm. that make us buy rather than I need sunscreen. Yeah, because then it doesn't matter who you buy from, right? No, I could buy some at the local supermarket. That's exactly. You can click a button and have it delivered and yeah. have no emotional connection to it whatsoever. Yeah. But but Alrighty. when you know the person who whips up the sunscreen and you know their ethics and you've met their kid and even the back of their kid's head, then you're like, oh, I love that. I love yeah. being part of that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> you have been so awesomely helpful. Oh, if, thanks. We're going to pop a link in the show notes because we don't have it right now. We caught you unprepared to your <laughs> awesome free guide. But yeah. if people want to maybe work with you or see what else you have on offer, where can they find you? Sure. Well, I am all over Facebook and Instagram. Um, if you search my name, thankfully I'm the only one with my name. You can also find me at crispcopy.com.au and if you want um, me to come and talk on your thing, you can find me at crispcrow.com.au. Oh, see, and, and I challenge you right now to say J. Crisp Crow fast five times. Can you oh, easy, J. Crisp Crow. J. Crisp Crow, J. Crisp Crow, J. Crisp Crow. <laughs> well, I can do it. When it's your own Practice. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing all of this. And as I said, we talked about so much and we didn't have links. So hop on over to the show notes or if you're listening to this on the go, click the button and you can grab Jay's uh, free download. Plus yep. you can also see the pen company at a couple. We'll, we'll get you to send us a few more. I will. About pages that you simply love. I will. I will. All right. Thank you so much. It was lovely. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Bringing Business to Retail podcast. You can find all of the show notes over at selinanight.com. 
If you found something that you heard today particularly useful, I'd love it if you could leave me a review on iTunes or Stitcher. And of course, feel free to share this episode with someone that you think could benefit by listening to it. Want more Retail Biz Strategies? You can watch the Bringing Business to Retail TV show where each week I'll answer a question or provide you with a simple, actionable retail biz strategy that you can implement in your business right away. If you have a question or a guest, I'd love to hear from you. Drop my team an email at podcast at and I'll see you on the next episode. Have a great week.